So there's been massive work done. As you can see, there's a 16 amp connector there. The caravan has power to it. I don't need to run it through the window now. There's power running to this fuse here. That's uh, an RCD, so like when there's a short to ground or stuff like that, it pops up. That powers these three plugs here. There's three because of these reasons. One will always stay connected to this super cool charger. I like this charger. Uh, the other one is the fridge that I'm testing now. And this one will be the connector to this other socket. That's going to be my socket here. From this, I can actually run some extensions and shit to where I need. So that's going to be here. This is going to be either there, which I don't think that looks too good, or here, which I think this looks way better. Uh, I'll probably have another one here in the future but I need to buy one and maybe one in the kitchen although water sockets I don't know about that maybe it's gonna be on the outside here like so yeah but until then it's all gonna be in this box as planned which is great now this will have an actual socket socket that I can plug in there when I'm getting power from outside or if not I could just unplug it and plug it into the inverter so yeah that's uh, that's one thing that I want to do sweet let's get to work in terms of oh yeah you didn't see this in terms of cupboard lighting bang I have here and here this is color changing LED which but this one failed and that's why it's the colors are all messed up but it works I've got light I'm happy really happy sweet uh, next up is this I want to make this happen properly support and then run the light wires uh, and then start building this so I can actually put some LED strip in. There will be a bit of LED strip here going up on the ceiling and a bit of LED strip here going down on the kitchen area. And then a line there with a separate controller going up on the ceiling. And I think that should be it for lights. It's a small space. So I'll put this row up. Which is nice, looks really nice. The splash proof thingy. So that's cool. This is fixed now. All I need to do is, after I fix the sink, put a bead of silicone in here. That should be it. You know, like when you do some things and you use, like, you know, old parts and shit. Now I've discovered that I have a leak here, exactly where the tap mixer is. Luckily I can get this sink off to get there, because otherwise it would have been a lot of cursing. Like a lot of cursing. A whole lot of cursing. It's probably like an o-ring job, so it leaks from here and here. This one doesn't leak. But that one does. It's leaking from there. Now, when you take these things off, the tap buttons, it does seem like, it does feel like you're gonna break it. But don't worry about it, because it's not gonna break. It's some kind of hard plastic that's not hard. I don't know how to explain it. It's uh, pretty weird. But they do come off. Let me demonstrate. So first time, it goes like this, you gotta, I did it many times and it still feels like they're gonna break, although they're not. So, you just take it out, okay now, 
All right. Uh, and then 17 inch, 17 mil socket up here. So take this fucker out. And then once you do take it out, hopefully there's some O rings there. Yeah, look, the pipe just came off. There's no O rings? What kind of sorcery is this shit, man? Alright. Okay, I think these were designed for systems with zero pressure. This just came out. Like that. Oh, Mastic. This is weird. So that's weird. There is an O-ring there, but it's not tough enough. I think. Yeah, there's an O-ring there. But it's obviously not tough enough. Uh, what to do now? Probably these come off. Yeah, they do. And the O-ring sits inside there. There's the O-ring. I do have an O-ring set, and I'm just going to replace both of them. Hopefully this is gonna fix it. Yeah, so this is the O-ring. I can see it's flattened. It's behind this lid here. When you take it off, it flies, so beware of that. So now I'm just gonna match this with one that I have. Which is obviously thicker. That should be it. And that should be it. So the changing of the O-rings method didn't work out. Uh, what I'm gonna try and do is put two O-rings, insert the pipes, and then put that pressure tap thingy on. But I doubt that's gonna work. So what I'm, my backup plan is just put Sika Flex in there, fucking seal the motherfucker, and that's that. But I'll try with two O-rings first. Yeah, I tried with the dual um, thingy and no, it doesn't work. So, I'm just gonna bring the big boys in, trench this in sicker flex, and that should be sorting it. So, what I do is put sicker flex in here, make sure it doesn't go too much in because then you'll have it clogging the, the shower. You don't want that, trust me. And then put the thing back in and hopefully, you know, it's gonna be sealed. With the Sika Flex it went... It was like harder to push it in, which is great. It's like, super cool actually. Just take all the excess out if you can. And then this is the cold one. Put some on this pipe also. Bastard. Let me see who's leaking after this, you old shit. Hopefully this is gonna sort it. Hopefully. Right, so I've cut this. I did this L shape here because this goes straight in there. And now if everything sh if everything works out, that goes there. I'm happy. Uh, I was expecting something like this though. Because uh, maybe I can yeah, I can. Alright, so that goes in here like that. And now this one, I could just push it in until it gets past the window, which is now. And that's brilliant because this is so cool. So we. There's one plank in. I'll make the other one and then do these. 
and that's that. So after some uh, diagnostics and some a lot of cursing, I managed to sort this out um, with some Sikaflex and some Teflon tape where the hoses were connected to the taps. Unfortunately, I don't know how this shower is cracked here. So when you close it, kind of water seeps there, but you're never gonna close it anyway. All right, so that's done. This is okay, it's not leaking. This is Sikaflex, it's really nice. I love this stuff. So I covered all the cracks with it and it's all right. I'll do some uh, aminol or whatever it's called on top so it's uniformly white or just painted, I don't know yet. So that's done, this is done. Also, that's the future light on the, uh, on the shelf that's gonna be there. With, of course, a dimmer, man. And I want this dual zone, so this dimmer controls that strip and there'll be another dimmer somewhere here that controls the strip next to the under the shelves that I'm gonna make the kitchen and there'll be a strip here somewhere I think yeah somewhere here maybe I'll make another shelf or I don't know so there'll be a strip like similar to that there sweet this is working the fridge I tested it with 240 and 12 volts it's working the taps are working Paulina found this from China it's really cool you put cutlery in here knives maybe some mugs and a little cloth it's I like it it's very cool I'm heating myself with gas at the moment because it's cold as here now and I was running the wire to this dimmer here. There's been massive progress. So this is zone one or zone two, whatever. This is the bedroom body, of course, with a dimmer. And this, when you go in, another zone, the kitchen. So there's been some work done, of course. Morning, my crib. That's this wall done. I forgot to run the wire for the lights. Uh, oh well. This is the insulation I used. It's a uh, 10, 10 centimeter, um, like rock wool. This wall is here, but it's got screws and it's a bit wonky. So pissed off that I forgot to run the, this wire for the other lights so now the wire is gonna hang out on the outside somehow <laughs> So this is the lights there, this is the lights on the kitchen, this is the lights on the other side. Now I'll have to cut this, the square for the, um, for the hatch and then bolt the square in. So that's how it looks with the ceiling thing cut. I need to fix the um, that mesh thingy, but it's so solid now compared to how it was before. 
like before this is all wobbly and stuff like now look click click it's like a solid solid thing really nice this mesh thing I need to fix it but it's quite nice looks quite cool the only thing I need to do now is complete this shelf I ran out of wood typical I made this shelf you can put mobile phones when we're charging or stuff like that. you know you can put them here it's got like a an edge so it doesn't shit doesn't fall from it uh, there'll be no more shelf there because I like the light going like that maybe I'll have a plastic lens or something to diffuse this LED so you don't see the individual LEDs but I'm super happy with how it turned out the kitchen light with the hall light and like the living light it's quite nice because you can actually do two rooms of of light now oh, this one is dark that's bright you know that's without if you turn on just the kitchen area it's like a cozy thing with two uh, two zones Alright, so one thing that I can sense straight away is the heat stays in now. With all that in that insulation, that that works. Actually, it actually works. I like it. Don't necessarily like the shelves, but maybe some paint is gonna help them. I do like the walls wooden like this I really like the wooden walls so here it is the first line of uh, laminated floor I'm cutting now the second one it's quite nice I put this insulation under it so it's got one layer of insulation and then this floor all right gotta get busy there's been some work done I put the curtains up they're really cool. They're like from uh, Wilco, like really cheap curtains. It doesn't really matter. I got them blue because it kind of works with this brown from the wood. I like it here because this is angled. So like the wall is angled. I had to catch the blind somehow. And I thought, why not make like a wooden blind catcher whatever so we can still see the lights that's pretty cool this is the bed made from the table and I've added oh no wait it's just like this like that I've added these lips here on which the table sits I need to readjust this plywood because it's a bit bigger than, than the actual wood piece and it's hard for the table to sit in but once you put it in that's the bed and there's some storage space underneath which is, which is quite cool and let me turn these lights a bit down like this because La Pierce Door Resistance so I've connected it to the aux input of this CD player so I have proper sound and I'm gonna test it now it's a bit echoey here but because there's no mattress yet So I'm connecting the big 13 wire wire that will come from uh, the car socket 
to the seven pin wire that was in the caravan now i will be connecting all these the colors are the same between the 13 pin and the 7 pin so that's cool uh, so this goes back to my lights my uh, uh, like road lights and then these are what remains now because these two wires are thicker I'm just gonna use the orange which should be the reverse light in the standards configuration uh, because the orange is thicker I'm gonna use this as a plus to charge my battery from the split charger from the car and I'll see if I need a minus I know there is a minus already there's a the white is the minus but I think there's two in the end so I'll probably use these as plus and minus uh, my caravan doesn't have a reverse light in the back, so I could do with not using these. And the other ones, I'll figure out what to do with them. Two of them, I know they're not connected. Uh, yes. Uh, as a split charger, I have what everybody else recommends. I've seen loads of clips about this, and everybody recommends this, sp this specific brand. Even people in the States recommend this product. So I'm just gonna use this one. It's got, it's silly simple. This, the red marked one is the, the wire that comes from the car. And this one is the wire that will go to my laser battery here. And it does what it says. It's just a simple relay that it cuts in when when the car battery, when it senses the car battery is 13.3 volts, it starts charging the laser battery and it disengages the contact between these when one or both batteries are below 12.8. So it prevents like uh, unwanted discharging of the battery. Now this kit came with everything and when I say everything I mean everything even this these connectors the fuses the fuses go in these in this uh, fuse holder and you put two fuses in one 60 amp fuse that goes through this battery and one 60 amp fuse that comes from the car like you know you put it in series with the circuit there it is that's it i think this is simple enough uh as mounting screws it's, it's got two mounting screws here one two i'm just gonna put it somewhere here in this area uh and that's that then all i have to do is put one of these fuses in the car and they even gave us this big roll of wire to run the plus from the car to the back um, uh, to the back plug so from the car battery to the back plug i'm going to use a little bit of this right now but i think i have enough to run the plus to the back all right i'm gonna get jiggy with it so there it is it's installed the fuse for my side of the battery for the laser battery is there um i've chose to use two wires because two wires better than one and i had so two thick ones in this 13 pin wire uh the orange and the red and white will be plus that's why i covered them in red tape and then this gray slash purple whatever and the mine the black and white will be the minus uh now i know there's another minus but this is for light and i'm just gonna keep this separate uh the minus for charging is gonna be this one uh, and i'll have a separate connection for that to the chassis of the car i'm not gonna use or yeah a separate one better I'm not gonna use the same one and this went in there 
all nice and what i have to do now is connect this minus plus to a uh, minus wire sorry to the minus coming from the car and then from here a thicker wire going to my battery minus on the other side i have this wire with this connector and i'm just gonna take off right now and connect it to the plus nothing happens now nothing changes now if i do that because the battery is not connected the, the caravan is not connected yet to the car anyway so i'm just gonna connect it there so it's there so this is the end product it's connected i've covered this with this came with the caravan i still have i think two more of these things and it's quite cool because it covers up all the connector block now i thought this voltage sensing thing senses the voltage from the first battery but it senses the voltage from this battery also and my voltage is 14.5 because i'm charging it right now but this engages and this is worrying because i don't want the battery to be drained non-stop by this engaging relay so what i'll have to do is put on this minus little wire here i'll add a switch right now i don't have space here anymore for an extra one but well these are the lights that i was supposed to use outside which i don't have yet so judging by the first come first served thing i could enable this switch to be the split charger so i could put that switch to be the split charger this way it's easy for me to just turn it on and off because if it doesn't have minus there then it can't sense anything and it can't work Luma is here helping helping stuff out uh, while i was talking i realized this is the mistake that i made so i connected this minus to the minus of the caravan battery but i could just connect this minus to the minus coming from the car so that that's gonna give me a reading and also this will only engage when it's going to be connected to the car so problem solved no more switch needed which is great as it turns out my reasoning was on point so now when i connect the minus to the battery terminals this doesn't go on happy days so all I have to do is connect its minus to the car minus, which is not connected because there's no plug yet. So it's gonna work when the caravan is gonna be connected to the car. Yeah.